Welcome back listeners. Prepare for an instructive episode as we go into the medical interventions for reproductive health and fertility. We have previously touched on understanding reproductive health and fertility and the factors that affect them. I remain your host, Uche Namadi, and I'm with the incredible medical consultant gynecologist, Dr. Oguni Rong and Dr. Ibudike. Please do not forget to like, subscribe, share, and follow Synlab Nigeria on YouTube and Spotify. Now, coming to Dr. Ibodike, again, I mm-hmm. hope you will not attack women this time <laughs> around. <again. laughs> so, again. speaking to the preventative measures, yes. what can you tell our listeners? Okay, so uh, prevention is one area that you can take it in strategies or in, in stages. You can say primary prevention, secondary prevention, tertiary prevention. Okay. So, for the primary ones, we talk about the issue of awareness. Um, awareness, 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 education, you know, on what are even these reproductive health, you know, issues. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, telling people about being responsible of, uh, you know, when it comes to their sexual behaviors is very important. Mm. And when we talk about responsibility, you know, before you want to have sex, you should remember what we said that you don't know is like a loaded gun, yes. you know, until you pull the trigger. So um, people should know, do I want to have babies right now? Okay, so if you are not ready, you know, you should think about the issue of protecting that particular sexual intercourse. And of course, you know that one of the things that can occur is that you can also have an infection. So you should be able to protect against that infection. So we're talking about being responsible. So at that point, you've known I'm not ready to have a child. I'm not ready to be infected. So you are taking active responsibility to prevent all this. Okay. And of course, the issue of prevention of unsafe abortion. Remember that Nigeria is still under the restricted, you know, abortion laws. We 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 are not yet, it's not a permissible place. You can just walk into the clinic and say, I want to have an abortion. No, you wouldn't do that. There's only one rule. It's only when the continuance of the pregnancy jeopardizes the life of either the woman or the baby. Mm. That is when that can, and it can't even be taken just by a gynecologist. That will be two in good standing. Wow. So these are issues you should know. So because you don't want to have an unsafe abortion, you should also be responsible about what you want to have. And so many other things. So in terms of prevention is awareness. Then of course, the issue of violence of women, a, a man that is responsible enough should know that shouldn't be Come on, of in 2024. Mm. And some people still do that. You know, you should know that when you do that, you can cause miscarriage you can cause depression in the woman and so on all right then family planning should be able to we have talked about it adopt the one of your there are so many of them so one should be able to choose in, in order to prevent so we'll talk about the issue of awareness then the issue of the secondary prevention of some of these stis is treating them early detection and diagnosis. Mm -hmm. So some people believe in over-the-counter treatment of infections. Mm -hmm. Uh, You go and get that capsule, mix it for me, one Ah, or two. Mix it. (laughs) It keeps doing that. Mix it too. Before you know it, people have had what we call urethra strictures Mm. from chronic repetitive infection or gonorrhea. They keep having it. And without you have it, the patient has an obstructive issue when it comes to, for the male now, I'm talking about the male. Ah, All right. Finally. (laughs) Finally. (laughs) You understand? So, you know, and these are not issues. So treatment, early treatment, treatment of uh, chlamydia infection, STIs and all that. Then, of course, um, when there is unsafe abortion, recognition mm-hmm. of that, and uh, we've seen a case in one of the in teachers where I trained, where a woman had, um, you know, uh, um, an abortion, of course, in one of the side, you know, places, oh, and they, well. they perforated the intestine, oh. and uh, from there she never survived. Oh, you know, so you can see just oh, pre- wow. preventing, yes. you know, during sex, not having baby that is unwanted from not unwanted. You want to go an abortion from that, you lead to death. Oh. So these are some of the things, and you know, so there are so many things. So early detection and diagnosis is very key and central. Then where we now have tertiary, there is already, the harm has been done. What we did in terms of, uh, you know, rehabilitation. The man, you have done everything, there's nothing they can do, like in front of cervical cancers. You know, uh, invasive organizers should be able to get help by having radiotherapy, 
you know, and, you know, of course, follow up or palliative care, as the case may be. There are so many of them, but let's limit it because of uh, time. Okay, right. thank you very much. So I'm coming to Dr. Ogunio. Yeah. I wanted to speak on how regular he health checkups contribute to early detection and treatment of fertility issues. All right. So um, regular checkups are very important. Um, we mentioned earlier that for those that are less than 35 years, yes. once they've reached um, one year of unprotected sexual, in sexual intercourse and they're not getting pregnant, they need to they come for health, yeah. health checks. I think what is also important as well is even before you get married, yeah, you need to check out. So let's just go for a check. Yes. And be sure. Uh, mm -hmm. I know yeah. lab. there was a time they had some um, packages where you can come in, check for this, check for that. Yes, and it's but we also have packages like that. So we want to check your hormones, all yes. right? Check yourself, know what is going on. For the man, check your semen, do a semen analysis. I remember there was a time we had um, some young sperm donors come in to say we want to donate our sperm. And wow. one of them did, very young guy, maybe about 23, 24 years. And uh, we had to talk to him that, look, you don't have sperms huh? in your semen at that age. And, you know, he mentioned something about treating pump treatment, all right? Because once you don't treat and you're taking over the counter drugs at the end of the day it obstructs the pathway Absolutely. all right so um spams are being produced but they're not coming out wow. so the man just believes oh um I'm, I'm just doing it i'm going in um nose diving as they call it hmm. but you don't know that yeah there's a problem back there all right yeah. uh, hmm. for the women as well coming to check in your hormones just to on an annual check at least just to hmm. check and see that everything is fine all right and we're able to intervene because what is important is intervention before it gets to the point of you are even 40 and above and now we are telling you that you can't use your eggs again for mm. a fatty treatment and you are like you know you're struggling like oh i'm going to use donut eggs at this point and of course what he mentioned earlier where they had to remove the womb <laughs> for some cases that have post complications we have to remove the womb and for Absolutely. such person by the time they get married they need to start talking about surrogacy yeah all right so it's a lot of areas that we just try to delve into but i think annual checks are important all right okay. and for those that are both 35 years within six months something is not happening they need to come and check Absolutely. all right okay. say gynecologist say fertility specialist we're able to say this is what is happening and we're able to intervene on time okay so diving deeper before starting fertility treatments yeah. can you tell us the medical tests that okay. one can do all right. So usually um, when they come in to see us, all right, to do assessments, we do a lot of tests. All right. Yes. Basically, we usually do blood tests for them. All right. So we're checking their hormonal profile. Yes. We want to know what is your EMH, FSH, LH. We want to also know what your TSH is telling us. Those are the thyroid hormones. We want to look at your prolactin level. Do we need to manage that? Mm -hmm. We also want to screen for infections. All right. So if we're going yes. to start any treatment, I will need to know um, what is your viral um, marker like. Uh, do you have HIV? Do you have hepatitis B? Do you have yes. hepatitis C? Uh, check for syphilis. Uh, for the women, we also check for what we call rubella immunity. Mm. All right, to be sure that, oh, you don't need a vaccine to boost your immunity before you even get pregnant because okay. of the risks that are involved. Um, sometimes, of course, we need to do a scan. All right, okay. the scan will let us know about your womb. All right, are there fibroids that need to be removed? Um, what are your ovaries looking like? All right, do you have endometriosis? All these things are important because whatever we're going to do at the end of the day, we need to know where yes. we are starting with. So yes. you want to build a house. You want to know what the ground is like, yes. how to build that foundation, all right? Yes. And for the man, of course, semen analysis is very, very important. I want to also look at screen for infections as well in both of them to now decide this is what we're going to do for you, okay. all right? And of course, there are different treatment options that are available okay. um, to manage women or couples who have, uh, that have challenges in fertility. Okay. But basically, once we do all this, we're able to say what is next. Of course, the HSG is also important. Yes. We want to be sure that the tubes, all right, are not blocked because if that is also if that is also a challenge, <coughs> yeah. then it changes the whole treatment option that we're going to offer the couple as well at the end of the day. Okay, thank you. Do you yeah. want to add anything? Yes, yeah, so I want to say quickly that the basic test for infertility mm. can actually dictate almost 80 to 90 percent of the problems. Yeah. Basic, and that is what he has mentioned. Mm -hmm. You are checking for the ovulatory function, you are looking at the tubes and looking at the SFA, just these three. Then of course, you can now go ahead and do other high falutin if mm -hmm. need be. Yeah. Okay. So once any couple they're able to capture this, they can at least know what is wrong. What the you know, is. and let me just say for the road, fibroid presence does not necessarily yeah, mean, mean that you must be you operated upon. Yeah. And wow. you will not, you know, so it depends. The evaluation again, wow. you look at it and classify. Is it the one he must intervene? Mm. Is it the one he should just monitor? All right, mm -hmm. but one women they, they are fibroid, they have had to, you know, they will just get distorted, not necessarily. Please. 
come for evaluation so that we know where you belong. Mm -hmm. I know that in terms of some fertility treatment, they will tell you that you need to remove the uterine fibroid before. Not all. But not mm -hmm. all. Not all. Exactly. Okay. They are, not they all. Are majority of women, do you if you've not done a scan, exactly. you even know you have fibroids. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. until you do a C-section, you know that someone yeah. has fibroids. So Absolutely. you don't have to remove it. So everything. you might not know mm -hmm. until you have to be evaluated, evaluated and of course know where you belong. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Thank you very much. This has been very eye-opening for me and I hope it has been also for you. So this concludes this conversation on medical intervention for reproductive health and fertility, but there is more to uncover. Do not miss the next episode as we look into caring for couples in fertility treatment. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share and follow Synlab Nigeria on YouTube and Spotify. Stay with us, stay curious and we'll see you in the next one.